Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine and which is sponsored by Enterprise Fleet Management. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of June 1, 2021. And when you produce a weekly industry report such as this, you know, the true reality is that you're just capturing a seven day snapshot in time. And I've been producing these weekly industry reports now for 59 consecutive weeks. And during this time, you can identify the short term trends that seem to carry over week after week. And these trends aren't just of what's of interest to me, although they are. Uh, the trends that I discuss in each weekly report are those trends that fleet managers tell me are uppermost in their minds for any given week. So one example is the longer lead times and vehicle availability issues for trucks and cargo vans. And it seems like you can't have a conversation today without this issue coming up. And over the weeks and months, uh, these conversations have ranged from the sudden announcements of early order build out dates to the ongoing microchip shortage to longer lead times uh, for ordered units to slowly move through the supply chain. But this shortage of microchips isn't just impacting new vehicle orders, it's all also now starting to impact the repair of fleet vehicles involved in accidents, especially when the needed replacement components contain these microchips, which ultimately delays their repair and the vehicle's re-entry into fleet service. But all of this goes to a much larger and much broader macroeconomic issue in that there seems to be a shortage for just about everything nowadays. And it's not just microchips and it's not just in the fleet industry. While my focus is on fleet management, at the overwhelming majority of the companies with whom I deal with, fleet is simply a tool to help achieve the goals and objectives of the corporation's core business, whether it's manufacturing, healthcare, energy, pharmaceuticals, insurance, and so on. These core businesses are likewise experiencing part shortages. And here's what some fleet managers are saying as to how these broader shortages are impacting their company's core business. So quote, this, there is a shortage for parts for everything. We can't get parts for the generators installed in our vans to operate the equipment that they carry, end quote. So I asked myself, what good is a van if the tools it delivers to the job site or to the customer aren't operable because parts to repair an onboard generator are on back order? And these shortages go beyond just simply equipment and parts. Many companies report labor shortages that impact their fleet operations. And here's what another fleet manager told me. So quote, we are having difficulty in attracting good technicians for open positions. Many of them are assigned to company vehicle, end quote. And again, I ask myself, what good is a vehicle if you don't have someone to drive it? Another ongoing trend in the minds of some fleet managers has been the upward pressure on fleet costs, in particular fuel costs, which have been rising steadily since the start of the 2021 calendar year. And recently, there's been increased questions among fleet managers wondering whether there will be upward pricing pressures for future vehicle acquisition costs. And one fleet manager who I highly respect made this prediction to me, and it's quote, I foresee a five to 10% uptick in fleet expenses for 2021 and 2022, end quote. So I, I too can foresee this myself and there are many things happening in the broader macro economy that can be used to support this forecast. For instance, one market variable is the price of commodities and their impact on overall fleet costs. And you don't have to look very far to substantiate this. Commodity prices are increasing and they are increasing across the board. And what's prompting the increase in commodity prices is the overall global economic recovery. And there are many examples of this. So today we're witnessing higher prices for both gasoline and diesel. Replacement tire expenses uh, are trending upward, not only due to the commodity prices that are um, used to manufacture these tires, but also because of disposal fee increases and the transportation cost increases to move tires from the factory to retail locations. And likewise, steel prices are increasing 
The price of iron ore is at record levels. And likewise, the price of copper is at historic highs. And the forecast in the futures market is that it'll go even higher. And people are calling copper now the new oil. And what's causing the increase in copper prices is that it's used in many green technologies, which governments around the world are pledging to boost and financially support. And in parallel, the auto industry, as we all know, is committing to transition to electric vehicles where copper is a key raw material. The bottom line is that the demand for copper is dramatically increasing, which is causing prices to increase. And this isn't the first time that widespread increases in commodity prices has occurred in the fleet market. I mean, we've seen the negative impact that it could have from past experience. And the last occurrence of widespread commodity price increases was in 2008. And at that time, the high cost of materials caused widespread price increases, in particular in the upfit industry. And we witnessed price increases for a variety of products, ranging from truck bodies to trailers, van interiors, van partitions, lift gates, crane bodies, and a whole host of upfit equipment. At that time, upfitting prices because of these uh, volatility of commodity prices, they were increasing multiple times and some manufacturers were guaranteeing prices for only 90 days, which was never seen before and I don't believe has seen, been seen since. Some manufacturers on top of the price increases were also adding additional component surcharges to buffer against uh, future commodity price increases. And some fleet managers who have been around for a while and actually lived through that period, they're now positioning themselves to deal with such an eventuality uh, if it should occur. And listen to what one fleet manager told me, quote, aftermarket parts shortages will be an issue in model year 2022. We are currently working with our upfitter to lock in pricing and obtaining and inventorying the parts we believe we will need in 2022, and end quote. And as the Baseball Hall of Famer Yogi Berra once said, you know, it looks like it might be deja vu all over again. And time's gonna tell, but perhaps sooner rather than later, whether this is going to be the case. But on that note, I'd like to conclude my weekly State of the Fleet Industry presentation for the week of June 1, 2021. And I'd like to thank you for listening.